Can you feel the love tonight? Honestly, I can't. And I'm going to tell you why on this episode of Topic Tuesday here on Comic Universe. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Web Search Must See Comic Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and I should know I printed it out myself. So, guys, another day, another topic. So, what we are going to be talking about today is, of course, live action remakes, and what exactly is the problem with live action remakes, at least as of late. So, I recently saw Lion King, and this definitely got me thinking about it. And also, a couple other things inspired this topic. Got to give credit where credit is due. Um, Maybe it was either last week or the week before, but I saw this really well-made video essay done by a YouTuber named Totally Not Mark. I'm a big fan of all his Dragon Ball content, and I like that he's like expanding outside of that territory. Mark, if you're watching this, you're great. Love your work. I will leave that video linked in a card up here. If you want to see that, it's really well done. And, uh, you know, if you do, you know, check out that video, be sure to comment on his video saying that Jay from the Comic Universe sent you. So, without further ado, the other thing that inspired this topic was a conversation I had probably two weeks ago. So, Me and my aunt were talking about movies we were looking forward to, and I brought up Frozen 2, how I was really excited to see the sequel to that because I really enjoyed the first Frozen movie. And my abuela chimes in, you know, this sweet old lady, and she goes, you know, Jeremy, aren't you a little too old (laughs) to be excited for a cartoon? And that really kind of shocked me, right? Because my aunt also loves cartoons. She's 20 years older than me. And I brought up that very point to my abuela. And my abuela goes, no, that doesn't count. Your aunt has, your tia has kids. She just watches it with them. That's not true. (laughs) That is not true. My cousins are both old enough to the point where they don't want to watch movies with her. So, she definitely watches these for herself, too. And that's kind of one of the points I want to really focus on with this topic. I do like live-action remakes. I thought The Jungle Book was amazing. I really enjoyed Maleficent. Heck, the Cinderella live-action remake was actually really well done. But... Here is why those worked and The Lion King didn't, in my opinion. So, with Maleficent, it was a fresh take on a classic story from a new perspective that made it a lot more interesting. It wasn't just it looked prettier because of new technology and we had star power with Angelina Jolie. It was a genuinely well-made movie with an interesting twist on a classic story which is why I'm hesitant about the sequel because it looks like it's just Maleficent being evil again for the sake of being evil because that's what she's known for and that's why she's iconic but that's you know not the subject here getting back on topic why the Cinderella remake worked for me was because I was never really a fan of the original Cinderella movie. I know some of you might be like, oh, that's blasphemous. It's a classic. And I acknowledge it is a classic. But if you watch the original Cinderella, it's kind of boring. It's a very simple, straightforward story. Now, the live action remake does not like deviate so much to make it even more interesting than the standard Cinderella story, but they add parts to it. They even add like a little bit of a geopolitical element that's kind of interesting. They don't really go anywhere with it, but they add more to it. They actually give the prince a name beyond the Prince Charming, and he's played by Rob Stark, so that's pretty awesome. And again, this is another one where the common theme all throughout the technology really enhances the visuals and it looked great but again they changed bits of the story to make 
an otherwise simple and kind of dull story a little bit more interesting. Now, it's not like groundbreaking or anything, but as someone who wasn't a fan of the original animated Cinderella, I enjoyed it a lot. With Jungle Book, I love the original Jungle Book, but I also acknowledge that's also kind of boring and simple. But with the live action remake, they definitely added more stakes to it, it felt like. The effects were breathtaking, and you still got that same kind of vibe and character dynamic that you love from the original. Baloo was still Baloo, Bagheera was still Bagheera. Ka was very sexy and had me a little confused. But other than that, like, the Jungle Book was an improvement when it was transferred to live action. Now, let's talk about The Lion King. So, The Lion King, prior to Frozen, was the largest and highest grossing animated feature that Disney had put out. It came out in 94, the very year I was born, and let me tell you, I wore that tape out. I have seen The Lion King so many times, I could tell you every scene backwards. Like, I could tell you the movie in backwards order. I've memorized every single song, even like the extra ones like The Morning Report and all that. No, all of it. I absolutely love it. I've read like the little side children's book about Scar and Mufasa. I even watched a couple episodes of Lion Guard with my niece because I was kind of interested. And I still hold to the fact that Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, should not be lumped in with all the other sucky direct-to-DVD sequels. I honestly think that was a good movie. But... I digress here. We're talking about the live-action Lion King remake. So, what's my problem with it? It's a visually stunning film, like everyone on the internet has been saying, right? But, here's my thing. And again, this might sound a little repetitive. I'm not going to pretend like I'm the only person who's brought up these points. What made the Lion King so special was that you could feel the emotions, the love, if you will, in every frame of that movie because of the color and all the expression that the animation allowed you to see with the lines. Because of this photorealistic style that the Lion King was going for, The lion's faces were all pretty one-dimensional. And so, basically, all the characters were just reading dialogue. And, you know, while The Lion King itself has a really good script, what made the movie special and so iconic were the scenes and just the emotions that they were able to invoke. And you don't get the same level of emotion from dialogue just by itself. You need the expression. I mean, that's the biggest part of acting, right? Expression. Yes, you need to be able to project your voice and deliver your lines. But part of delivery is also body language. And you can't really do that and be realistic. This is a movie about talking lions, and I know what you're probably going to say, but Jay, you just praised The Jungle Book. What makes it so different? The Jungle Book had Mowgli. Mowgli was a human character who could react like a human to all the things that were going on. And even with The Jungle Book, despite the fact that they didn't have the same animated emotional expressions that the original 1960s movie had, they at least used body language very well. Ka especially, you got that vibe from her. And Baloo and Bagheera, they gave off that same personality through body language. 
Baloo with his lazy, nonchalant attitude, Bagheera with his hesitant, cautious movements, they made you really understand their personalities. You don't really get that from a lot of the characters in The Lion King, except for the ones that most people will point to that stole the show for the movie, Timon and Pumbaa and the hyenas. They were able to deliver their performance through body language, like their different movements and cues. Now, their emotions weren't expressed through their faces, but they were able to move in a way that really conveyed their personality and helped deliver their jokes. And that's why Timon and Pumbaa were some of the best parts, if not the best parts, of the live action remake. Now, I'm not just here to say that the Lion King live action version or the CGI movie, whatever you want to call it, there's a big debate on it on Twitter, whether it's an actual live action remake because it's just CGI animation. But anyway, what I'm not saying, or what I'm trying to say is it's not bad. But the biggest crime of this movie is that it was just okay. And the fact that I have to say that something connected to the Lion King was just okay, that breaks my heart. And what I also strongly dislike about this movie and in some of the marketing is that how it was pushed towards people made a lot of people think, okay, you know, cartoons are for kids. I can watch the live action one. No. In this case, and in the same, you know, case with Beauty and the Beast, the animated one is so much better. And you can still enjoy it. And I'm not here to bash on anyone who enjoyed the CGI Lion King. I thought it was still a good movie, but it was just okay. The Lion King original animated version, absolutely phenomenal. I could watch that on a loop for the rest of my life and never get tired of it. And it's one that I'm gonna plan on sharing with my kids, my grandkids, as long as that movie exists, I will continue to share it. But I don't think this CGI version will have that type of longevity. Like, yes, the effects are beautiful, but technology will continue to improve. But the original just has something that you can't recapture. And there are certain movies that are just like that, you know? At least that's my opinion. But that's pretty much all I have to say for this episode of Topic Tuesday. Let me know what you guys' opinion on live action remakes are. And, you know, did The Lion King kind of sour you on it? I'm honestly still looking forward to Little Mermaid because Little Mermaid at least has humanoid characters and human characters. So it'll still be interesting. But I don't know, man. I really hope that more heart is put into the upcoming live action Disney remakes that we have coming up. But let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like so let me know you enjoyed it. The likes really do help. They help spread the video all throughout the algorithm so it gets recommended to more fans like yourselves. And if you like what we do here on the Comic Universe, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time myself, DPZ, or C-Dubs uploads a new video. Hit that subscribe button and become one of Earth's Mighty subscribers today. We really appreciate it. In the outro card, I'll leave linked a video YouTube mysterious algorithm, things you might like, which I hope you do, and I will leave linked our latest upload in case you're new to the channel and want to see what we have to offer here on the Comic Universe. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mysterious Reviews, and like I always say, once Comic Geek, always Comic Geek, and once a Disney fan, always a Disney fan. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the universe. Peace.